Alright guys, Touchgrab back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And as the Challengers Cups conclude last night, there's been lots of talk from Shotzi and Co as to the one key issue within Call of Duty Vanguards that he wants to be fixed right now. If he could choose one thing to change, it would be squad spawns. We're going to dive into exactly why over the coming minutes. Very much intrigued your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and it's the best thing you can do to help this channel reach new people. And please consider subscribing as well if you haven't yet already. Firstly, this from Shawnee. GG's to everyone we played so far. Come sitting in the North American Challengers Cup Grand Finals 18 and Crackty says. So of course uh, Shawnee, former player for the London Royal Ravens last year. Honestly, I think Shawnee in general has been pretty an underrated player the last several years of his career. Like I'm never someone who gets an awful lot of respect. Pretty solid player on a couple of different roles. Generally I think better with an AR in his hands. But of course just given how it went for London last year it was never really going to be too successful him getting a spot back into the league. But um, I mean when he has gone down to Challengers before, I remember during the Black Ops 4 season towards the end of it, I'm pretty sure his team won at the Black Ops 4 like amateur like open the eventually challenger champs that, that it was in that year they won that at the end of the year there in miami i'm pretty sure so um, when he has been in challengers he's definitely had some good success and now he's still out there in north america doing the same thing that he was a couple of years ago so pretty cool to see of course like if expansion ever does arrive then maybe we're in a good position to get a guy like shawnee back into league i still think he can be a serviceable player but of course that last season on london wasn't so ideal of course that duck sent to martin right didn't quite make it all the way the obligatory replies here as you can see as always more the morons that uh, you know for some reason replied to this every single tweet that Doug ever does he's uh, he's living in the head rent free to be honest but um as he says truly unfortunate we aren't competing this Sunday in the preseason cup the greatest part about competition in life is that you always have another opportunity to prove yourself excited for the next cup next weekends so um, that's the thing right there uh, the fact that none of these cups effectively mean all that much there is some prize money on the line here for the champions but uh, it doesn't mean too much in terms of seeding for the upcoming tournaments because right now they're not even playing the third game mode and um, of course part of the reason for that is because squad spawns are such an issue we'll see what Chelsea has to to say on that hit in just a couple of minutes time these then the champions from all the regions now we have four regions to discuss that's really cool so latin america rafa legenda savage and chaos not exactly try to pronounce all that type of stuff but congratulations to these fellas the apac region it's the classic sets nimble zephyr and crimson maybe not a massive surprise there but i'm not sure these guys are actually signed to an organization at the present time nimble especially is a name i remember from like the black ops 3 pro league days he was absolutely killing it in the online arena that year then europe we've got the, the spanish guys journey lucky mental and real and then in north america it is that team of Shawnee Classic Assault and Exceed to win the first Challengers Cup. So pretty cool to keep our eyes on how this is going. This also from Assault, kind of looking at this team, it basically just seems like a pro team, right? But these guys, of course, dropped down to Challengers. Exceed has been there or thereabouts as well. NA Fake Cup number one champs with Classic Exceed and Shawnee only dropped two maps the whole tourney. So they're going to, well, hopefully run it back, I guess, next weekend, at least from their perspective. But I'm um, definitely excited to keep our eyes on how this is looking going forwards. This also I thought was kind of funny, right? Because Classic won this tournament without too much of an issue. And as Sim says, I would stop you better at Classic says look online that's the only way you're going to be able to take us down and that gunless in the reply you know face down all this type of good stuff because of course gunless and classic versus phase at that stage five major that was uh, certainly a series to be remembered seattle versus phase at that event remarkable stuff no doubt i can't uh, wait to get back to land to be honest this also from exotic i thought was kind of crazy well call me crazy but gun run out of cave that being like as a cave would be elite on this game i'd play arc off peak on this game to zarsties as well so maybe like um there's been some talk about well you know we thought when this game came out 16 maps it's going to be good there's going to be a lot of maps that we can actually play on and enjoy on a competitive level and it seems like it's so bad in, in reality that even Gunrunner, Assay Cave, Arkov Peak, these maps are being considered to be brought back into the game. The problem is if they do bring it back, could this potentially have the hitch points outright? Well, okay, you've got Gunrunner, but um, you know, I'm pretty sure they would do this right. They would put the wall on this uh, on this window and there's okay, what is going on right here? We've got to punch it down. All these problems that the walls and the, all this type of stuff creates is so frustrating to deal with. That's the thing. They can bring it back some classic maps, but they probably will not play it like the classic maps did actually like at london docs have talked about all this type of stuff maybe they will end up just playing with that with the maps that actually launch with this title for the entire year kind of hope that's not the case but um even good maps they could bring back from even a game like modern warfare like gunrunner was pretty solid to be honest especially for that title like um i mean they probably would be ruined one way or another i would imagine this also just because the flank was going on last night the fact that it was eggs and benjay in the scene that were kind of co-hosting the show definitely made some people wonder like is eggs gonna be that kind of next up co-host there's been some talk about this right could enable 
table be coming in? Like, a, what's the situation there? Like, um, how would the bias potentially work out? Because if you guys haven't heard, Ben J. Nassim from the New U is stepping down as the co-host of the flank. So who's Zuma going to get in instead? I think Aix would be a pretty good fit. There's some other guys I think that would work as well. And then, um, you know, of course, some people are talking, okay, could Aix be biased here? Like, is he actually good at holding a constructive conversation? Or, you know, does he just uh, get in arguments and stuff like this? Which um, is also maybe possible as well. So it's a difficult one to say. I think Aix would be pretty good in this role. I think there's other personalities that could do a decent job as well. But maybe we will find out in the new year or something like that, hopefully, when the CDL season is very close to beginning. So this goes on last night, right? Shotzi tweeted this out. We looked at somewhat earlier today. And Scum's like, you know, what do you mean by that? And the reply is, right, is Scott Shotzi going to be leaving us to go over to the Halo side or something along those lines? Now, the Optic Texas podcast last night comes out and they're talking about a few interesting things about like the way their season went really during the entirety of the Cold War year. The fact that like if they beat, um, the former was suggesting that if they beat Atlanta Phase early on in that season, way back in the stage one days, then um, you know, they would have been in a great position to have a great run there at the stage one major. That could have changed the entirety of the way their year went. And Shotzi kind of echoes a similar thing. Hex goes on to ask Former, like, you know, what's going on with FaZe? Like, how are they doing things? And Formal says, look, Atlanta are actually doing a fair bit of complaining and whinging and whining and this type of stuff on the timeline about the state of the game. But then Shotzi goes on to say, yeah, the game isn't in the greatest spot. If there's one thing I'd want fixed, it would be the squad spawns. I haven't heard much about uh, Atlanta this, uh, like, sure. at all. Have, have you guys been screaming them? Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. been seeing them bitching on Twitter, to be honest. I see Alec, I don't think Alec likes the game. No? Nah, he's always in my chest. No one, no one, no one likes the game. I mean, hey, listen, I, look, don't find me. <laughs> uh, but find I me. personally, I, I, listen, I don't, don't like the game. From a CDL perspective, I don't like the game. From a Game Battles exclusive only, S&D only perspective, I vibe with a heavy. I don't like the opening the oh, doors and I don't like that sh But aside from that, I if like If you could change only one thing, would you be squad spawns? Yeah, 100%. Yeah? 1 million That's, that's what percent. I said the other day, too. I was like, it has to be squad spawns. 100%. That's, I, that's what everyone would It's a whole different cod. It's, so, like, <laughs> it's a whole different game. I'm literally playing the game and like I have to predict spawns. And it's like... But you can't. Yeah, it's like so. It's so you hard. You have to. to keep track of where the guys are on the map. That's what I'm saying. Like, like it's so deer. hard. Yeah, I, staying alive. I don't know. Th that's what it would be. 100 percent squad. Is spots. it a sledgehammer thing, squad spawns, or is it just um, like has there been? Let me ask you this: Has there been a Treyarch game that has uh, squad spawns? No, no. 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 And Infinity War. Cold War. Last year, last year the game was. Uh, I love the game. Like, like I literally MW. know exactly where people were spawning. W. Yeah. Who made? Who oh, made I, I, I W. Oh really? Because yeah. that, that's who had squad spawns first. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something the same engine, I think. I think that's yeah, well, it's, I, there's, there's uh, Infin Infinity Ward, and then there's Sledgehammer. They and then they kind of, like, work together in mm -hmm. some in some cases. Yeah, Treyarch's kind of, like, on their own. And then Treyarch does their own thing because they're gangster like that. So I think that's one of the main concerns, and understandably so, within the game in its present state. That, yes, we have control as arrived into the game as an official CDL mode. But the fact that squad spawns are a thing means that control doesn't really work as you would want it to. You're just going to spawn on the hard point next to your teammates if there's one guy there. Let's say there's one guy in the control point last alive. He's capping it. The other guys are spawning out. The entirety of his team probably are going to spawn right next to him on that point. So um, the offense in a way gets kind of blessed, I suppose, but also the defense could get similarly blessed in terms of defending a point if they get the right situation. So control, I don't really think works at all in a squad spawn environment. That frankly is probably not going to change at all, which does make you think of what's going on here because while well, shots even discussed, maybe it wasn't in that clip, but it was slightly earlier possibly, that um, some players have been discussing, you know, could domination actually be the third mode? Because in fairness, despite domination being terrible as a competitive mode, it is probably one of the only other modes that actually works not too bad with squad spawns compared to normal spawns. It's still not great by any means. We saw in Modern Warfare though, like, um, you know, the squad spawns didn't ruin the game mode compared to other type of things, whereas control probably is completely invalidated by the way the spawn system works in this game. Or do we just go two game modes? Like, what do we do? I don't really know. But um, that's the thing. Like, they're basically just saying, like, look, if squad spawns could go, that would be 100% the best thing we need to do here for this game going forwards. But for whatever reason, they're probably not going to get rid of them. That Things aren't going to change, I would imagine, for competitive play. Unless there really is a proper, like, you know, CD development team involved in playing this game and um, they're dealing with it from the competitive side which I would be very surprised at right and if there was you'd imagine we would have seen it already to be honest like um, and they might you know theoretically be able to step in and say yes okay we're going to get rid of squad spawns for this matter I mean look at this master use right this clip right here where like all the guys are just like on top of each other just spawning like at left right and center like all over the shop which is just incredible frankly but um, I mean yeah who's surprised at this point with the state of this game it's just how things tend to be but if squad spawns don't go anywhere as we wouldn't expect them to then like you know what is this 
this actually mean for competitive play this year, right? Shotzi obviously isn't particularly happy about it, but uh, what does it mean for the third game? And I think that's the more key one. Search and destroy, it obviously doesn't matter. Hardpoint, it's not great, but probably over time it can be somewhat predictable. Control is probably chaotic. Maybe they can get used to it eventually, but um, I mean, still, it doesn't seem ideal. CTF, like how would that work as well? I'm not even sure CTF would work particularly well, because if there's one guy OEing, the entire team might just spawn on him, and then you get four guys running to your spawn to cut off the flag guy. Like, uh, that really shouldn't be how it is. So definitely a lot of concerns really about the way the spawns work in the game right now. There's also some other things coming out as well. There's some true game data that came out yesterday. I'm not sure the validity of this, but uh, you know, Jay Gob was kind of talking about it in the replies about the fact that apparently private matches and public matches have a different build of the game and can have different statistics. So supposedly there's some weapons that have different damage ranges and stuff like this in public matches to private matches. So like when you're playing in pubs and stuff, it's different to what it is in custom games. I'm not sure how that's even possible or why that's a thing. Surely that would be more effort than it's worth to even produce anyway. But um, I'm probably not something that technically affects the pro players. But uh, just the last couple of years, I've heard the fact that like the 60 hertz servers that the pros play on is actually different in terms of spawns to what the 20 hertz servers can be. At least like the CDL matches like and stuff like this. Kind of crazy. I wonder if this can possibly happen again this year. I honestly just wouldn't play it past them at this point. I don't understand some of the stuff that comes out about this game, to be perfectly honest. This also from Zero, greatest e-comeback ending to a hard point you're ever going to see. And as that slash says, give this man an MP40. Some crazy stuff will happen. Trust. Automaton, 25 bullets, rapid fire, visual recoil, competitive, says Parasite. So yeah, of course, I understandably maybe not particularly happy with the state of the game right now. Parasite always going to, well, have an opportunity to talk about the problems within the game when he gets the chance to do so, which, well, there's a lot of opportunities to do so with the state of the game at the present time. Nice little clip that I'll, uh, well, I'll share for you guys, I suppose, as we round out the video right here, frying people left, right, and center. And just as this clip rounds down, there was uh, the final topic. I'll show the tweet over here in just a couple of seconds from Pomage. We talked the other day that like Black Ops 2 Remastered, Black Ops 3 Remastered, what should we bring in? Would Black Ops 3 Remastered be the way to go? And he's kind of suggesting it could be a similar thing to Call of Duty 4 Remaster, which came through like MWR, that um, a lot of like OGs wouldn't say was particularly well aligned to the original state of the game. If they remastered Black Ops 2, would it be particularly similar to the way the game is played out, at least at, well, the way the original was? Like, would it be very different? Would it feel nothing like Black Ops 2? You'll just be disappointed. That's a possibility. But um, still, surely it'll be a better competitive game than what we've been served up the last couple of years. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button and tell the YouTube gods this is a good video. I looks like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.